Okay guys, okay guys, just wanted to pop in and say that I have a spoiler version of this video and I have a spoiler free version of this video and I will be having that for every single Harry Potter book that I read. It is very possible that the spoiler free videos will get shorter over time but I wanted everybody to be able to find some sort of enjoyment out of these videos and hopefully decide whether or not they want to read Harry Potter that um, you just come to hang out and have a good time uh, on the channel and maybe it inspires you to read whether it's Harry Potter or not. I don't care. But if it's inspiring you to read and making you feel happy and giving you the good vibes and good feelings, that's all we care about here, okay? Yeah, I hope you all enjoy. Today marks an absolute momentous day for me. Many things are going on in my life right now that are just wonderful. Having a good time, okay? And when mental health status be low and good things happen and then just keep compounding on each other, it's just the best, okay? So first off, I want to say that I am very blessed to have been picked by Mrs. Shaughnessy Schroeder, who did this little thing on her Instagram where she was picking people who had recently posted about uh, watching her and Alex's videos. And she gave me a $50 gift card to Barnes and Noble. And it was so random, it was so out of the blue. And I was so excited about it because you know what had happened? I read the first Harry Potter book, started it on Christmas day and finished it beginning of January. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to read these books. And then I got the card and I was like, oh my gosh, that's like, that's going to get me most of the books. Three through seven. I can only thank Shauna C. Schroeder and my wonderful husband for uh, supporting me through this journey through the $50 gift card. And I had $15 worth of points that my husband and I had racked up together. I got these books for free. <laughs> Not the second one and the first one, I bought those, but between the $50 gift card and the points that I racked up, I got three through seven for free. And I feel like that, it's like the books are gonna be that much better because they were free, you know? Like in my mind, it's like when food tastes better because it's free, when you go to a barbecue or something, it's free. Mm. Okay, anyway, so let's be real. I have never been so excited and so nervous to start a book series in my life. Now, I just started reading seriously last year. It's been since last February, I think, is when I actually started reading and like getting more serious about reading. And then every time I was reading, I was like, oh my gosh, I wanna talk to people about this, but no one in my life reads these books. Maybe I should do YouTube, I don't know. And then I started it, just spit the bullet, and now here I am, you know, uh, went from the Marine Corps to doing a booktube channel, you know, weird, okay. I am the type of person that if I'm really enjoying something, especially if it's a show or movie series, I will not want to finish them. I have been unhealthily attached to the first and second movie because they are just so happy. That's just where I've found joy for the past like two years maybe. I have rewatched the first and second Harry Potter movie sometimes like once a month, I'm not going to lie. Or just have it on in the background. You know, I'm not like fully watching it. I'm usually doing something at the same time, but like just to have that little, mm -hmm little taste of joy, you know? Let's not be silly and be like, oh, well, Harry Potter is for kids. Okay, but like in the 90s when these were coming out, everybody was reading them and no one had a problem with it. So why are you trying to take people's joy from reading? I don't want the series to end. Like, I don't want to read them because I don't want it to end, but I want to read them so bad because I'm so excited to see the original source content. I haven't watched three, four, or five the movies three years, two years, something like that. I haven't watched six, seven, and eight because there's Half-Blood part one, Half-Blood part two, for those of you at home wondering why there is seven books, eight movies. Um, I haven't watched six, seven, and eight since they came out. So I'm so excited because there are some things, some kind of major plot points that I know about but I've forgotten so much and that is, I would wanna say so exciting, but it's not exciting that my memory is not great. But what is exciting is that I get to kind of like re-experience it for the first time once I get towards the end of the series. And also, like I said, memory not so good. So even like 
three, four, or five. I haven't watched those in a couple years. That is going to be a re-experiencing for me. I am not caught up on the lore. I don't know as much as I should or whatever. Having grown up in the age of Harry Potter movies being very popular. But I haven't been able to avoid all the spoilers. I do know that I'm going to be very emotional and I'm already like emotional in even wanting to freaking start the second book because I already started the first one. I mean, I already read the first one and now it's like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna continue and I'm nervous, Loki. I'm nervous because I'm so excited. I'm so scared for it too. Anyway, okay, so I'm done rambling for now. Let's get into the second book, which is The Chamber of Secrets. It is, okay. <laughs> Go with myself. <laughs> So I kind of have a feeling that this video is going to be quite long. We'll see. However, just beginning to start this book, I'm on page like three. I love seeing the Vernons because of their craziness in how much they are just so maddened by the fact that Harry is a wizard and how scared they are of him, but at the same time, they are still so mean to him. And it's like, oh, well, you know, he could do some bad things, y'all. It would be illegal, but he could. And I just think that kind of stuff is funny, just how on edge the whole family is, even with certain words or movements that Harry has. Anyway, I tried to match my, my little tabs with the front of the book. So we got some purple, we got some light blue, and obviously the red is going to be for my fave Gryffindors, you know, Harry, Ron, and Hermione, of course. Um, and then I've got the light blue, like his shirt, the dark blue, like his jeans and the floor, and um, green, like these little snakes, and then um, purple, also like the floor down here. So um, it's not perfect, but I'm also not going to go out and spend a bunch of money on tabs when I could just use the ones that I've already spent money on. So anyway, I'm gonna continue reading and um, it'll be good. Okay, so I don't know about y'all, but sometimes when I'm going to read, I feel like it's such a big like mental task. But then when I actually sit down and start reading, I'm like, I'm having the best time. This is actually relaxing because for whatever reason in my brain, I'm like, oh, relaxing is like sitting down watching YouTube, like watching TV and just like shutting my brain off and all this. And I'm like, reading is so much more like enveloping, whatever. So I'm reading the second book and I just wanted to bring up this quote that made me very sad. So we all know that Harry is hated by his uncle and his aunt and he is already met in the first book, already met Ron's parents. And so in the second book, he goes to visit them for a little while, basically. I'm not gonna say how, cause that would be a spoiler. But it says that their house was very funky. Like there's a lot of stuff going on that he's never seen before, lots of magical stuff. And then he's like, what Harry found most unusual about life at Ron's, however, wasn't the talking mirrors, the talking mirror or the clanking ghoul. It was the fact that everybody there seemed to like him. <laughs> <laughs> it's
Isn't that so sad? I'm sorry. I've just been like attached to these characters for like my entire life. So I don't know. That's just so sad to me. And then there were a couple of kind of descriptions, like subtlety things, like Harry's in the situation where he's nervous. And instead of saying, oh, he's nervous, he's scared that, you know, he's gonna get caught or whatever. It says, oh, Harry brought his arm up and wiped sweat off of his forehead once he was like safe, basically. And I was like, I like that subtlety. And she also described a shopkeeper's voice as oily as his hair. I just love little fun stuff like that and I feel like, I mean, I don't know, I haven't read that much literary fiction, but I think that's the fun thing about fantasy is that you have a bit more descriptor words that really fit in with the fantastical genre. So not much has happened in this book so far. I've been enjoying it, of course. I'm only on page 56 and we'll see how the rest of this goes. I think I'll be able to read this pretty fast as long as I get over my little mental struggle of thinking that reading is a chore when I know it's not. I know I enjoy it so much, but for some reason, I think it's just because I have fatigue issues with my chronic health problems. Um, so I've had Hashimoto's and fibromyalgia, which are two things that kind of work against me for like my um, mental stuff. Like, uh, like you can get a lot of brain fro fog from both of those and then like headaches and a little bit of memory loss issues. But on top of that, it just makes me have chronic fatigue issues. So when I start to read, it's really relaxing and then I get tired. <laughs> All that reading helps me relax, which is really nice for someone who has very high anxiety. So. Fun call. Yay! I'm getting a call back because my tires cracked and I have to go to the auto shop today. The sun literally went away as soon as I went to turn the camera on, but whatever. So I am 48% through. You can check that on Storygraph. Um, Storygraph over Goodreads any day, by the way. So I just wanted to give some updates. So there are a couple things about this book that I wanted to talk about so far. So one of the things that I'm really enjoying is that JK Rowling is kind of interweaving her world with ours and being like, oh, well, the Mongols think they lost their keys, but really they've been enchanted as a trick. So they just get smaller and smaller. So they think they lost them. And I thought that was something just like kind of cute to add in. If you know, you know, but she's laying it on hard with Professor Lockhart's confidence. And he is so annoying. If I met this man in real life, I would be so annoyed. Like he's more annoying than he is in the movie for sure. But he's, everything he says is like hilariously self-righteous. I've noticed that there's definitely a lot of foreshadowing and I don't know if that's just because I've seen the movie so I know what's going to happen or if it's just like blatant foreshadowing. Oh, this is very, like you can really tell what's fixing to happen because it's the way she's saying it. You may not know how it's happening but you may know that something's gonna go wrong or something. Also, take this with a grain of salt but J.K. Rowling mentions a lot of overweight people in her book and she does not mention it in the nicest of ways. And it does make me a little uncomfortable to read it. But yeah, I'll leave that at that. Mm -hmm. And then <laughs> there was a part where I literally wrote in my notes, wow, didn't know Harry and Hermione were quite the detectives. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> they were really very, very smart, which I guess they are just smart, but I don't know if I would have been able to find what they were finding when I was 12, so. Also, I wanted to mention the creepy part where Harry's like trying to figure out what's going on. No one else knows what's going on. You, as the reader, don't know what's going on. That must have been super creepy to read. Very kind of enthralling, because you're like, oh my gosh, and then she doesn't bring it up for another couple more pages where the voice comes back, and then you're like, but anyway, oh well, yeah, I just said it added to the eeriness and scariness of the book, which I like about this entire series is that it starts out very like wholesome and everything and then it goes dark. That's cool. Okay, but um, basically that's what we got going on right now. I got some tabs going on here. 
and um, it's going pretty well. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. I'm on page 166, which is 48% through, according to Storygraph. So, yeah, we'll see how the rest of this goes, um, but I'm having fun. And I'm I'm very much craving my like epic fantasies right now. For some reason, I keep hearing so much about Jade City, the Greenbow Saga. Oh my gosh, I wanna read it so bad, but I can't, gotta read Harry Potter. And I wanna read them all consecutively. I'm more so that way about series just in general. Like I want to read them in, in order, um, unless the books get too heavy for me. Um, like emotionally, then I will try, I will usually read the whole series book by book instead of reading. Book two of this, oh, well, I'm gonna go read, you know, Brandon Sanderson something and then, you know, come back to Harry Potter and I don't wanna do that. I just kinda wanna read it all through and enjoy my time and just be immersed. Okay, let's get into it. There are so many things that just go so under the rug in this book, like um, one of the teachers threatening Harry, telling him he'll kill him, and then Harry and Ron not getting expelled just for the sake of plot. There's definitely some things that are like, for the sake of plot, you know, just under the rug. So, okay, anyway. Welcome to the beginning of the end of today's video. So, I finished Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets and I wish I had somewhere to put this. Maybe I'll, you know, something like that. Okay, I have wrote a couple notes. Harry, Ron, and Hermione, they did some messed up stuff to some kids. And I guess it makes sense because they thought that they had to do what they had to do to save the school and quite possibly the world and the people who were in danger specifically. But it was kind of wild how Harry, Ron, and Hermione, Hermione takes her turn doing the most illegal stuff that she could probably think of. She breaks the worst, I mean, she breaks one rule and then she just can't stop breaking the rules. It's just over from there. She broke the rules in the first book and now, boom, the second book can't stop breaking the rules. I wrote also, Aww. My cats were touching noses. They've only been with each other for a couple months, so it's very exciting when I see them do something sweet with each other. That's not them like, ah, at each other, you know? Anyway, something Harry did in the movie, in my opinion, didn't make any sense, and it was explained in the book, and I was very, very excited when it was explained. All throughout the book, I was questioning Ron, Harry, and Hermione, and being like, why are you guys so smart? Like, why are you guys like little detectives? Like, why do y'all know everything that is going on? Because y'all are just too, too smart to be freaking like 12 year olds, you know? Oh yes. I also, I like the twists and turns that JK Rowling decides to make in this book. I think that that could be very exciting for young people and older people, teens, you know, young adults, whatever, to read because 
I feel like if I were to be reading that for the first time, I would not have known twists and turns. However, even with the foreshadowing being so heavy, page 248, yeah, I was still getting anxiety during reading this book because it was tense. So this book to me, I don't know if it's just me or if it's because I've watched the first and second movies so many times and I'm never gonna shut up about it apparently. I'm like getting tired of myself saying it, but it feels like it has some forgettable moments. And I feel like maybe it's just me combining it with the first book that they kind of progress in a similar way, you know, have more of a cheery beginning to more eerie picking up later towards the end of the book sort of vibe. Sorry, I keep looking at my notes. There is still a nice slow build up to it because she drops in little pieces of plot, plotting, of eeriness, of scariness to kind of bring you into that mood of something's bad going, something is bad that's going to happen. Are people going to believe Harry? Why is Harry the only one who can understand or hear what is going on? Why can other people not hear what's going on? Also, I wrote down a little note of Hermione finding a solution and the boys interaction 255 was just so cute. It's just so sweet. I just love Ron, Harry and Hermione and their friendship dynamic. Oh yes, so not a spoiler, but Quidditch is a game that they play and it's a bit more deeply, I don't, I wouldn't say deeply explained in this book, but you do get to read about a Quidditch match happening and I really did enjoy reading about it. That may not be everyone's cup of tea because it's more of like a slice of life, doesn't really matter as much to the plot, but I enjoyed reading about it. Oh yeah, and then I also wrote that the book has more childlike things in it than the movie and that the movie seems a bit more well adapted to kind of reach to like the parents who are gonna be watching this with their kids and everything like that. And I think it's really just because one scene where there was a duel happening and there were silly spells being casted like, oh, the ticklish spell where you can't stop laughing. And I'm like, oh, well that's kind of childish. And like, I could see why a child would find that funny. Like, reading that as an adult with the, what was it? The ticklish spell and the other one was, I don't know, there was some other spell, but I was like, eh. But then again, like you read the book and there's kind of some gory stuff in it. And you're like, oh, but this is for kids. But like, she's kind of, you know, making it for, for everyone, even just her books. I don't know, these teachers be driving me crazy with how willing these teachers are willing to put the students in danger. Who are you, why are you not? like doing background checks, right? Cause I understand like Hagrid because he has so much trust in monsters and stuff. Still, I feel like he's willing to put them in danger. I mean, is it in danger for the greater good? I don't know. I feel like when it comes to JK Rowling, of course this is a kid's book. It's not to, meant to be looked at super deeply, but I still do think about, I'm sure that there are plot holes and I'm not like, I'm trying to have a good time, right? So I'm not trying to be super crazy on these books, right? I'm trying to just have a good time, feel the nostalgia for my childhood, get back the good memories, see how she progresses from going from more childlike books to more teens slash adults because you're growing up with the characters. And I think that that is really fascinating. I'm also reading Robin Hobb's books right here, which she also does, you know, a child to an adult, except for that it's not a children's book to even start out with. It's, there's no, but he, but you do start out reading a character at six. So it's not like a crazy thing that only JK Rowling does, but I do enjoy that type of story as you're growing up with the character. And I do enjoy a school setting, though I don't think I would be much of an, a dark academia fan necessarily. But I do, I did enjoy Babel and I am enjoying reading Harry Potter because Babel was language school, Harry Potter is like wizarding school and it's nostalgic for me in my childhood, so you know. Um, but all in all, I did really enjoy this book. I think that some of the stuff felt kind of muddy in the way that I just combined the first and the second movie a lot and I feel like I do the same thing with the book. So there's just some like slice of life stuff, just them going around the school. But she does have that slow kind of, because if it was all fast, 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 which is how Percy Jackson is. Percy Jackson is very quest based, very fast, like you're getting slapped in the face by freaking adventure and stuff in this one. I felt it was a little slower than the first one, but not slow by any means, like not in a bad way at all. Yeah, I enjoyed the progression. I enjoyed having some more time with the characters and I am really looking forward to continuing this series. Uh, so the next book is Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. And I have watched this movie probably three times in my life, maybe. And I am excited to see more of of the slowly getting into it being darker 
and seeing um, the prisoner of Azkaban because I do enjoy him as a character, at least I did in the movie, at least I do remember that and that there's some very interesting plot points that happen in that movie that I do remember but I'm excited to see them all play out. I'm excited to see and read what I forgot. As for rating on Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, it's very hard for me because it's like, I don't think like I can objectively rate it and be like, oh, well, you know, it's not, it's not like on the same level as high fantasy or like, you know, adult literature or whatever, right? But for my enjoyment, I would, which is how I want to try to rate my books, it's a little bit objectively, but book ratings are always going to be subjective. They're always going to be based off of whoever is reading it, like however you're perceiving the story and everything like that. So I would say it's a 4.75 for me only because it doesn't stand out enough for me. But the first book, that was a five for me. Not because it was faster or anything like that, but that it's just, it's the start of the journey. It's the beginning. It's got all those good feelings. And this one, I like that you start seeing the little bit of progression to the darkness, but it felt kind of samey to the first one. So I'd say 4.75 just out of, based on my enjoyment and based on some objective-ish opinions. But like I said, you know, these opinions can all be subjective. And um, I know some people don't like the series as a whole. And you know what? I don't blame anyone for not liking Harry Potter. Like everyone is going to have different levels of enjoyment for different things. Everyone likes different stuff, you know, and I just so happen to enjoy Harry Potter. So I will be enjoying making these videos for y'all. Please let me know how you felt about it. For my non-spoiler video, let me know if you've decided to pick up Harry Potter or if you've not, why you haven't. And um, yeah, please no spoilers in the comments for my non-spoiler video. Yeah.